Welcome to Axiona's Mortlake South Wind Farm virtual reality experience. Today you will have the opportunity to explore the wind farm and experience firsthand what it is like to visit an operational site. Prepare yourself to get up close to a wind turbine, explore the inner workings of a nacelle, and if you're game, strap on a harness and take in the views from the top of the turbine. Before we begin, I need to make sure you have the appropriate protective equipment. Let's see. A long sleeve top and bottom, that's good. You also have a high visibility top on as well, so we won't need a vest then. And safety boots, check. Looks like all you need is a hard hat and some safety glasses. There you go. Well, let's not waste any more time then. Let's get exploring. Well, here we can have a broader view of the site. The Mortlake South Wind Farm is situated five kilometres south of Mortlake and seven kilometres northwest of Terang in southwest Victoria, Australia. The wind farm is located on over 6,000 hectares of leased land. However, less than 1% is disturbed for our use. The remaining land continues to be utilised for mostly dairy farming. The location has been selected for its high exposure to consistent winds across this part of the state and its proximity to the transmission network. Active construction commenced on the 35 turbine wind farm in early 2019. At 4.5 megawatts each, the wind farm has the capacity to generate 157 megawatts or the clean energy equivalent to the consumption of around 115,000 homes annually. The construction of a wind farm starts with building access roads for the transportation of equipment and the connection routes between the turbines. The Mortlake South Wind Farm has 18 kilometres of internal roads, but as you can see it also utilises a number of local roads. Following construction, these access roads are used for ongoing maintenance activities and for landowners to access their stock. An underground electrical collection system connects each wind turbine to the on-site substation, located here. Underground lines then connect the on-site substation to the electrical grid interconnection facility or point of interconnection at the Terang substation. The turbines are monitored, accessed and controlled remotely through our global control centre in Spain, SOCOA, and by our full-time staff located on-site in the operations and maintenance building, which is where we are right now, to ensure the wind farm is operating effectively and efficiently. At the end of the wind farm's life, 25 years or more, a decision will be made to either continue operations or decommission the wind farm. Decommissioning is the responsibility of the owner of the wind farm, Axiona. Now it's time to put on your hard hats and safety glasses because we're heading out into the field. Continuing with our visit, we are now at the base of a turbine. As you can see, farmers are able to continue to use the land in and around the turbines. Some sheep have even been known to sit in the shadows of a turbine on a warm summer's day. This coexistence is something that we are very proud of. It's also an example of how renewable energies can bring benefits to all and coexist against the backdrop of normal local activities. Looking at the foundations, these concrete structures are built to safely secure the wind turbines. Foundations consist of concrete, reinforced steel and bolts. Each foundation is extremely strong and is up to 23.6 metres in diameter and approximately 3.4 metres in depth. The foundations also contain approximately 720 cubic metres of concrete. They are wider rather than deeper in order to support any vertical oscillation caused by the force of the wind. Wind turbines are composed of a tower, three blades, a hub and a nacelle. Once the foundation has been poured and is set, the four tower sections are assembled by large cranes and bolted into position. The nacelle, hub and blades can then be lifted by a large crane and fixed to the tower. The nacelle, which houses the gears, generators and electrical conversion equipment, is about the size of a minibus and weighs approximately 140 tonnes. In comparison, these blades are approximately 72 metres long, but only weigh 30 tonnes, as they are made from fibreglass. The tip height, 
which is the highest point of the turbine off the ground, is 186 metres. Let's take a step back so we can get a better view. But how does it work? Wind turbines convert the energy of the wind into electricity. Wind turns the blades, which spin a shaft connected to a generator, thus producing electricity. Wind turbines generally start to turn at speeds of 3 metres per second. Most turbines reach maximum power output at a wind speed of around 15 metres per second or 54 kilometres per hour. In extreme wind conditions, 25 metres per second or around 90 kilometres per hour and above, the blades are angled or feathered into the wind and the wind turbines are shut down so they are not damaged. In normal operation, the rotor turns the blades at approximately 9 to 15 revolutions per minute at a maximum tip speed of 230 km per hour. The nacelle, which contains a generator, transmission system and power control equipment, is designed so that it can rotate around the tower to face into the wind, allowing the turbine to produce electricity regardless of the wind direction. Let's jump back and see the turbines in action. Through the power of virtual reality, I am now going to change the direction of the wind. Pay attention to the nacelle as it adjusts to face the new direction. Now if you listen closely, you might be able to hear something. Wind turbines have two potential sources of sound aerodynamic sound from the turbine blade passing through the air and mechanical sound such as the gearbox or generators inside the nacelle. The wind farms built by Axiona respect all sound regulations and permitting requirements and we work daily to fulfil these and other environmental regulations. This is key for us and for everyone. Now that we've had a look at the outside of the turbine, let's take a peek inside. In a moment, we will be transported inside the nacelle to look at some of the components used to harness the power of the wind and convert it into electricity. Before we enter the nacelle, we need to take the turbine out of operation. With the turbine stopped, it is now safe to make the long journey up the tower to the nacelle. Here we are at the heart of a wind turbine. As I have said previously, the turbine is made up of different parts and this, the nacelle, is the most important one. It is where the kinetic energy extracted from the wind is converted into electrical energy. If you look around, you will see the different main components. This is the main or lower speed shaft. This is directly connected to the rotor outside and transmits the movement from the hub and the blades. It turns at the same speed as the rotor, about 9 to 15 revolutions per minute. The gearbox increases the speed of the low speed shaft rotation to 1250 revolutions per minute as the speed of the previous shaft is insufficient to generate electricity. The high speed shaft is connected to the gearbox and the generator. Over here, the generator, this large piece at the top of the nacelle, captures the movement of the high speed shaft resulting in the generation of electricity. All of the components of the turbine have been designed and optimised by our engineers in close collaboration with the suppliers of each element, as well as the experience acquired by Axiona operating thousands of megawatts of different technologies for over 20 years. The turbines at the Mortlake South Wind Farm are very reliable and robust, utilising proven technology which guarantees maximum electrical production during its entire lifespan. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to step outside. Without further ado, the Mortlake South Wind Farm.
visiting the Mortlake South Wind Farm. We hope you've enjoyed your experience. Before I forget, let me take that PPE off you. Thanks. See you again soon.